Hey, this is Aaron. And Blake, we're AB Data. Thanks for watching our Ultra Tool demonstration videos. In this video, we're taking a look at the Generate Rows tool. The Generate Rows tool can be found in the blue preparation category. It's, uh, we're going to use the open example um, that Alteryx provides for us, as we do with all of our demonstrations, so that you have the data available and can follow along. You'll notice that the Generate Rows tool looks a little bit different than most tools. It has a gray input anchor, and what, what that means is that it's an optional input. If you look at a tool like the Formula tool, you'll see it's both green input anchor, um, like most tools. Uh, if you look at the Report Text tool, that's another one that's like the Generate Rows, where you can create a standalone data set using this one tool. Let's go ahead and set up our Generate Rows tool now. So we're going to create a new field. We can't update an existing field because none exists. We're going to go ahead and call this row count. We're going to start at the number one. We're going to say, let's keep looping through this expression as long as the row count is less than or equal to 10. We'll hit the run button and we'll see that we now have rows generated 10 records generated one through 10. Now we can change our loop expression and we can say, the uh, row count plus two. So we should get all odd numbers from one through 10, which will stop at nine. So we'll have five records this time that are one, three, five, seven, and nine, because we're adding two each time. And we're making sure that we're less than or equal to 10. If we wanted even numbers, we could start with two and say two, four, six, eight, 10. We still have five records, but it's all of the even numbers rather than the odd numbers. All right, let's look at a data set now. Here we have a customer ID, account numbers, authorized users, an account open date, and account close date. We're not worried about that account limit field. We're not gonna use it. Let's go ahead and connect to our data set and set up our generate rows tool. So when it's connected, we're gonna execute the row generating loop on every row in the original data set. So we are going to um, make our data sets grow, but that's kind of the point, right? Where a lot of times we're going to be filling in some information. So let's create a new field here. And let's call that authorized user number. And we're actually going to end up calling it authorized user number. I'll come back and fix that in a minute. Let's put that down below here in our condition expression as well. So we're going to say authorized user number is going to, here, I'll go ahead and fix that is going to be uh, less than or equal to three. We're gonna start at one. We have to come down and fix our loop expression at the bottom. I'll just copy this so I make sure I don't have any typos. You guys see I tend to have some typos sometimes. Uh, so we're gonna say authorize user number plus one. We're gonna keep counting up until it's um, equal to three. So we should go from five records up to 15 records. Each one's going to have three records generated. So we can see we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three for each of our five original records. Pretty cool. Um, we can actually build a little bit more complex uh, situations in this. Let's go ahead and copy our generate rows tool and paste it down below. Um, so that we can generate a variable number of rows. So we're, we're going to change things up just a little bit here. So our, rather than saying that our authorized user number is going to be less than or equal to three, we're going to say that our authorized user number is going to be uh, less than or equal to the number of authorized users from our original data set. Oh, let me try that again. I, I missed when I clicked, I suppose. <laughs> All right, let's say, okay and hit the run button, take a look at our data. And our data is gonna see on customer ID number one, we have two authorized users, so we get two records created. We only have one, so nothing happens. For customer ID three, we have three, just gonna say one, two, three. Customer ID five, we have two. So we're gonna have two of those, and we now have eight records displayed. Let's look at an example using those date fields that we have. We wanna go ahead and fill in the days between our account open and our account close date. So let's create a new field that's called date. Uh, the expression that we're gonna start with here is going to be the account open date. 
So let's just go ahead and grab that. And then we're going to want to say that when our date, <laughs> excuse me. So we're going to want to say that when our date field is less than or equal to our account close date, that's our condition. Okay. And down in our loop expression, we're going to say let's add one day until we get to that account close date. So we're going to start at the open date and uh, we're going to keep adding days until we get to the account close date. So we're going to use the date time add function. We're going to use that date field. Our increments are going to be one days. We have to say days because we're talking in days. Now we'll see that we have an error and that's because I forgot to change the type when I created my new date field. So I'm just going to say okay and I'm going to go fix this. I'm going to go to the type and I'm going to change it to a date. So now the error is cleared. We should be all good. Let's go ahead and hit the run button and see what we get in terms of our results. So we'll see for our first record, our account open date is the 1st of February, and it's going to count up until we get to the 7th of February, which is our account close date. Uh, the next one starts on uh, my sister-in-law's birthday, which is uh, Star Wars Day, May the 4th, right? And we're going to start up May the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th. And those are all filled in. Now, let's try a little bit more complicated example here. Here, we're going to uh, use formulas in each of the three parameters. Okay, so both to initialize the condition and the loop. All right, so looking at our data, we'll see that we have different items which have categories. Categories are important here. We have minimum values and maximum values, and you can see the maximum and min values for category A are in factors of 10, um, so that we're going to treat them just a little bit differently here. So let's go ahead and create a new field, and we'll call this what if test value, and this is just for our, our purposes here um, to test. So our uh, initial, or our first expression here um, is going to be our max value. That's what we're going to start at, and we're going to count down until we get to our min value. So we're going to say for our condition that our what if test value needs to be greater than or equal to our minimum value. Say OK. And then our looped expression is going to be a little bit more complicated. We're going to use a conditional down here because we're going to want to treat category A and category B differently. So I grabbed an if-then statement that I'm going to turn into an if-then-else-if statement. Um, if you want to, you can just grab the if-then-else-if to start. But I'm going to say if the category equals A, then... Let's go ahead and take our max value, or I'm sorry, our what if test value, excuse me, and say minus 10. Else if our category equals B, go ahead and click on this so that I don't make any mistakes here. Then we're going to want to uh, say on our what if test value, we're going to want to say minus one. Because remember, those numbers were in smaller increments. So we had like four and three. And so we're just going to say minus one. And then we need to have sort of a catch all here and say, otherwise, what do we do? And what we're going to say is we're, we're basically going to cancel things out. So we're going to say for our else if. Or I'm sorry, for our else, we're going to say that our minimum value minus 1. But we always want for our minimum value to be, um, uh, is always going to be smaller than our what if test value. So nothing's going to happen in that case. All right, so category A, we're subtracting by 10 until we get down to 10. 
Uh, for item number two, they're both 20, so nothing happens. For number three, we're going to subtract by one each time. And then for four, we're going to subtract by 10, again, from 120 down to 80. And our final item ID, number five, we're just going to... Thank you for learning with us today. Good luck on your Alteryx journey. For more information on custom training, managed service automations, and more, please visit our website at abdataconsulting.com.